Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos. I've been very busy uh, making protectors. <laughs> so I'm, that's sort of slowing down a little bit now. So I decided it's time for a new video. I like to talk today about the central meaning. This is the speaking silence or the silent speech, the hashmal. Um, this refers to the path of Shin, the mother letter of fire, which connects Hokma, wisdom, with Bina, understanding. Um, the, the top three sephirot of the tree of life, Kether, Hokma, and Bina, the I, essential meaning, and essential form, these are the supernals, so uh, it's called the supernals, which means that they exist in everything, everything within the universe, um, equally. Um, everything has I. Everything has meaning. Everything has form. And all three of these work together to create the universe. Um, all three of them um, reflect each other. Where there is form, there is essential meaning, and there is I. Where there is essential meaning, there is form, and there is I. Where there is I, there is essential meaning and form. They go hand in hand. You really can't separate the three. They exist in everything. Now, in my second video on my little book, Love Letter to a Dying World, um, I, I spoke about essential meaning and essential form. And I gave a little exercise in the direct perception of essential meaning. Um, and a few other recommendations in there. But I, I think that uh, is overlooked, really. Uh, but it's very important. It is an entire branch of magic unto itself, like evocation, Kabbalah, alchemy, etc. Uh, the magic of the path of Shin is all about essential meaning, um, perceiving essential meaning, communicating with essential meaning, and manipulating essential meaning. These are the magics of essential meaning. The easiest entree into essential meaning is the direct perception of essential meaning, which I spoke about in uh, the second video of Love Letter to a Dying World. Um, and that that is something that we are constantly doing. We, are, we always perceive essential meaning at a subconscious level. It informs every perception. It is the basis, the root of all perception, is this communication of essential meaning. Essential meaning always communicates itself, and it always communicates itself through form and through I, but it's mostly easily recognized through form. Um, and this includes all forms. All forms have I and essential meaning. All forms communicate essential meaning to the universe. And when we encounter a form, we perceive its essential meaning amongst the other perceptions that we have. This is the true language of the angels, not Enochian or whatever. It's the language of essential meaning, communicating essential meaning and perceiving essential meaning. And it's this interchange of essential meaning is a fundamental language of all existence. This is how we talk to the animals, <laughs> through essential meaning. Um, 
I think that it, it was the basis of human communication at a time before, probably, before we started to domesticate animals and plants. This was how we communicated with each other. And we can still communicate with each other that way. Not only human to human, but human to plant, human to animal, human to mineral, human to anything. We can communicate through essential meaning. It is the universal language. I have a lot of friends, you know, Facebook friends and internet friends, that for whom English is a second, third, fourth language. Um, they have very rough English. Um, in fact, I have one friend in Russia who it speaks very, he, well, he speaks good English, uh, considering, um, but it's broken English, and it's often difficult for him to find the English words for things, but we understand each other because of essential meaning. I can hear what he's trying to say, and through essential meaning, I can perceive the meaning of what he is saying. So our conversations are half language and half not. Um, and I'm sure, well, I hope you've all had that experience of speaking with someone that you know so well and it's just clicking and you're understanding what they're saying before they even finish the sentence. You know, they don't even need to finish their sentence because you understand each other. That's essential meaning. That is our perception of essential meaning, you know, uh, shining through, really. Um, so, it, it, I urge you all <laughs> to pursue the exercises in my second video uh, on Love Letter to a Dying World. Um, to pursue those exercises and try to become familiar with the perception, the direct perception of essential meaning. It's very informative and it's very important um, to truly understanding the world around us. We can look at anything and perceive what its essential meaning is expressing. It might be quite different from our human conceptualization of that thing, and that's valuable information to have, um, especially in communicating with other people. It adds so much to your ability to truly communicate, to understand, and to express, because with essential meaning, you learn to express your essential meaning, to express what is at the heart of what you want to say. Um, yeah. Um, there's also um, a form of mental wandering that deals specifically in just essential meaning. Um, essential meaning, we perceive essential meaning with our mental body, the really the most rarefied aspect of our mental body, the fire aspect of the mental body. That's the part of our being that we directly perceive essential meaning with, and through which we can directly communicate our essential meaning. And it's that part of our being that we manipulate essential meaning in the magic of essential meaning. So, in this form of mental wandering, um, there is no perception of body. You know, we don't take a mental body to wander with. We wander purely with the awareness. And all of our perceptions are just of 
the essential meaning. So when we uh, wander in our environment, we're not perceiving the chair, the couch, the rug, the camera, you know, etc. What we are perceiving is just essential meaning. The essential meaning that inhabits this chair. The essential meaning that inhabits the couch, the carpet, the camera. So the, the world appears quite different uh, than our normal perceptions. Um, in standard mental wandering, our perceptions pretty much match the physical uh, reality, the objective physical reality. But in essential meaning wandering, it doesn't at all. I mean, it doesn't look the same. Um, and the perceptions are complete. I think that's really the best way of putting it. The, the perception of a thing is complete because your perception encompasses the absolute whole of that thing. So this is very powerful stuff uh, that I encourage you all to explore um, and to think about. One consequence of, of the fact that everything contains I, essential meaning, and has form. Everything that has form has I and essential meaning. Um, I suggest you meditate uh, about that because it's really <laughs> very deep when you think about it for a while and think of all the consequences. For example, I can imagine um, a, a red ball, okay? My imaginary red ball has form. It's a mental form, granted, but it is a form. It is real. It is mentally real. It's not physically concrete, real in that sense, uh, but it is mentally real. And if I want, I can make it astrally real as well. So, it has I. It has essential meaning. And it's expressing essential meaning, and it has form. And that's a mental creation. Our thoughts are things. Our thoughts are real. You know, our thoughts have I. Our thoughts have essential meaning. Our thoughts have form. So, this is infinite. The everything that exists mentally, astrally, and physically as I, has a central meaning, and has form. It has life. You know, its life may be as totally ephemeral, uh, instantaneous. You know, I let go of my red paw. It no longer exists, but it did exist. It did have life. So that's... <sighs> <clears throat> that has consequences. This is the essence of magic. Why we use the creative imagination. Because when we imagine it, it becomes real. Mentally real. Astrally real. Still real. And this is what draws the, the, the rest of the universe to this real thing as it expresses itself and receives the expression of other things, it becomes more and more real. And, you know, like we're, we're imagining the elements, we're creating the elements, we're connecting with the objective real elements through this process. That's why the creative imagination works. This is nature. It's doing this everywhere. 
everything is alive. Sometimes very, very briefly, sometimes for a long, long time. It's all relative and it's all kind of irrelevant because it has existed. It is existing. Okay. <laughs> so think about that and the, the consequences, the implications of your thinking, of your doing, of your creating. You know, we're always creating life constantly. But, you know, we can choose to do that intentionally and with consciousness. And that makes all the difference in the world. And that's the essence of the magic of essential meaning. We so easily create things that have essential meaning in I and then dissipate. It's come and go, come and go, a billion times a day. Um, <laughs> it's sort of mind-boggling when you really think about it. And I urge you to really think about it. <laughs> okay, that's it for me for today. Till next time, bye-bye.